Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video we're going to be covering five tips in Adobe Illustrator. Let's get into it. If you've been following me at all, you know that I use Adobe Illustrator for laser engraving and UV printing design. Now, there's a few tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that have made things much quicker for me to design, as well as made my designs much cleaner in the end. So what I'm gonna do is walk you through five of these tips, show you how to use them, and then if you have other tips that you wanna share, put those in the comments below because I'm always looking to learn new things. Let's get started with tip number one. The first thing I wanna cover is joining shapes together. So this may seem really simple if you've used Adobe Illustrator in the past, but for a while when I first got started, this one just drove me nuts because I couldn't figure it out. Here I have a design. It is made up of separate elements that all overlap each other. For a laser engraving, if I were to outline this right now and send this over to a laser, you're gonna see a ton of lines that overlap. It looks disgusting. What we need to do is highlight everything just like this, go over to that Pathfinder area, go to Shape Modes, and select Unite. So when I do this, it makes one solid object, and if I go to Outline It and add a little bit of thickness just so it's a little bit easier to see, you can see that all of that crazy overlapping is gone, and it's all one single shape. It is super simple to join shapes together. The more complicated the shapes, obviously, the more review you wanna do. But just joining things together, use that Unite tool, save yourself a bunch of time. Tip number two is creating an offset path. Now, for some softwares, this is referred to as contour. In Adobe Illustrator, I haven't found a different way to do this. So if you have a different way, I am all ears. But what I do is I select my object, I make a copy of it directly on top of itself using Control C to copy and then Control Shift V to paste in place. And then what I do is go out, I go up to effect, go to path, offset path, and then I'll choose some values. So let's say 0.25, click OK. And then once I've offset the path, if I go to object and then expand, it will create a single solid object. If I go over to that Pathfinder option, click on outline underneath of Pathfinders, and then add a little bit of thickness to it, you will see one singular path that outlines that object. This is great if you're trying to do like an outer border for keychains or even like a sticker die cut corner, that kind of stuff. Uh, this is going to be how I do it. Again, if you have a better option, leave it in the comments below. I have not found a better one yet. But I'm also not a professional graphic design artist. I quickly want to mention my laser educational platform called Lasers Made Simple. Lasers Made Simple is all about bringing laser users together, helping each other, creating that community, being able to talk about what we're working on, what we're having trouble with, and supporting each other along the way of growing our own laser businesses. If you'd like to join it, check out lasersmadesimple.com slash community. It is completely free. Inside of that community, you can check out different threads, post what you're working on, and get to know each other. And if you're interested, I also have a membership at lasersmadesimple.com slash membership, where you get access to monthly group lives, past recordings of group lives, as well as a brand new course that I just released that's all about building your laser business from scratch and trying to take it to the next level. If you have any questions, let me know, but let's get back to tip number three. Tip number three is getting rid of unnecessary nodes. Now this can be kind of tricky. If I zoom into this outlined path that I just did, you can see that there are unnecessary nodes. If I click on the pen tool, you see all of these extra nodes. I do not like those there. They end up being a spot where the laser will go to, it'll create a joint, and then it'll keep going. You wanna try to get rid of as many of these as possible without affecting your design. I had been struggling with this for a very long time, 
And I came across a video on Instagram. I don't remember who did it, so I am sorry that I can't provide credit there. I will look for who it was. But if I go under the pen tool and hold down, you will have one that says delete anchor point tool. Go ahead and click on that. If you just hover over an anchor point and you click on it to delete it, you'll see that it deforms your shape. Now this is very frustrating. And the more I do this, you'll see the more it deforms, right? And this ends up getting rid of the original design that you wanted. Instead, what you wanna do, uh, if you're using a Windows machine, you're gonna hold down Shift. I think it might be the same on Mac. And you're going to then click on the anchor point you wanna get rid of. Now, you see it might change it a little bit, and if it changes it a little bit, it means that one's more of a controlling node and you don't wanna get rid of it. If you click on a different one, so hold down shift and click on this upper one that it had here, you can see that it got rid of it, it didn't affect the shape, and it actually reduced the number of nodes. This is what you wanna to try to do across your stuff. Now, even, even when you're doing this, it may change the shape a little, but overall, it still looks exactly like you need it to. This will help you so much in making your design simpler, making the machining path simpler, and having less joints will give you cleaner cuts. Definitely practice with this. Try to get it to work the way you want and utilize it as much as possible. All right, I'm gonna switch files here for a moment. And I want to go over tip number four, which is clipping mask. Now, clipping mask essentially takes whatever's inside of a boundary, and then you can think of it like it die cuts it. So it will keep whatever's inside of that boundary and get rid of whatever's outside of that boundary. This is really great if you have designs like this one, where there's a bunch of extra stuff that you don't wanna keep. It works well for if you want to try to clip a material graphic or something like that to show what a material would look like. And there's, a, there's two things I wanna show you on this. So first off, you wanna make sure that your boundary is on top of the graphic you wanna clip. Highlight both things, right click, and say make clipping mask. This will do that die cut stamp and keep whatever's in the middle of it. There are two challenges with this. First, when you do that, it uses that external boundary as a clipper, so it gets rid of it in your design. So you can see that I no longer have that black border. A good way around this is if you copy that boundary, paste it in place, and then you do the clipping mask, you get rid of one of them, but that one you copied is still there, so you still have it in your design if you wanna use it as a cutting border or something similar. That is challenge number one that you need to make sure that you handle while using the clipping mask. Challenge number two that comes with the clipping mask is once it's clipped and you can see the graphic here, there's an issue that I didn't know about until recently. If I hover over this, you can see all of this extra stuff. Now when I send this to my laser, I send directly from Adobe Illustrator to the Epilogue laser software and it automatically detects that clipping mask and it sends it over perfectly fine. What I didn't know is that if you save this to an SVG and then somebody opens that SVG in Lightburn, it will still show all of that other stuff because it's still in the file, it's just hidden in the background. Now, again, I don't have this issue with what I do, but if you are somebody that uses SVGs, this issue will happen. So if you're trying to design files for multiple systems, take this, you're gonna select your clipping mask, go to Pathfinder, and then under Pathfinder, there's one called Crop. If you click that, it will essentially flatten that piece to be just the clipping mask. And now if I hover over it, you'll see that that's all that's left. Even if I were to try to ungroup it and then release the compound path and all of that stuff, it still only has whatever is inside of that shape. 
I just learned this recently, but now moving forward, I'm gonna try to do this with all of my designs so that I don't cause confusion when somebody opens an SVG file. Tip number five, which is one that I use, and I understand if not everybody wants to do this, is I like to organize my designs by layers. I create different layers for different processes or different parts of a design so that I can easily hide and show what I want. My bookmark project from a previous video, I'll leave that video linked, is set up that exact way. So I have a layer that is just the outer border. I have a layer that is the stitching pattern, a layer that's the reference for the magnet placement, and then a layer for the engraving design. The reason I do this is while I'm designing, I like to be able to go in here and turn off a layer and turn it back on and see what things are going to look like. I can also send it to the machine this way. So if I don't want the blue to show, but it's important for my design itself, I can just go in here, turn off the blue, send it over to my laser, and then machine, and that blue will never show up. This is more of an organizational tip, not really like a software button tip or anything like that, but I have found this to be super helpful for me when I'm working with my designs. Those are five of my more recent tips for Adobe Illustrator that I use in a lot of my laser designs. Again, these tips are really geared towards designing for laser machining or CNC machining, that kind of stuff. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you have any tips of your own that I didn't cover here because there are a ton that can be added to this, leave those in the comments below as well. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And be sure to check out my Instagram, at Maker Experiment, where I share things along the way. But I want to thank you for taking the time to watch the video, and I'll see you in the next one.